I'm not used to speaking to such nice looking people. <laughs> uh, some of you may know, but I'm a county master gardener and my specialty is teaching people how to grow vegetables in high desert. And uh, as I was working up my new section of ground uh, last year, and then as I was planting this spring, I was breaking uh, about 280 some uh, square feet of new garden. And since I'm a county master gardener, I get a lot of people come and see my garden because they think they know what I'm doing. And so as I was working up this particular plot that I was going to grow beans and onions and things in, I dug the ground up deep, two foot deep. And then I worked it into beds. I worked in all types of organic matter. And then when it came time spring, I had the beds made. They were four foot wide, 35 feet long, and they were perfect for growing. In between each bed, was a ditch that was about 10 inches deep and the beds were about four inches high and then had all types of organic matter in it. And then as I worked the top of each bed, I put a crown along the edge. And then as I planted the seeds, I made a little furrow for each of the row of seeds. Uh, to grow food in the highest desert is, is an art, it's a skill. And the whole purpose of all this was, was to catch every single drop of moisture that would come from the sky. If possible, all eight inches of it. <laughs> uh, eight to 10 inches. And so it's very difficult. But what I wanted to tell you was, as I was planting this particular uh, new section of garden, a scripture started to go through my mind. And you can find that at Luke chapter eight, verse five. The first part of that verse says, and the sower went out to sow his seed. And so here I was, I was planting my seed and this started to go through my mind and I kind of smiled at myself and thought, this is kind of nice, I'm doing the scripture. I'm planting seed, I'm being a sower. And then I kept thinking on it and I got to thinking about that parable. And I've heard so many messages about the soil. I've heard a few messages about the seed, but I never, that I recall ever heard a message about the sower. Now, I just explained to you, I went to all this work to set this garden up so that I could get the maximum amount of moisture, the maximum amount of soil temperature, everything I needed to have a successful garden. And it is very successful, I'm growing a lot of food in it. Uh, and so I went to all this trouble and I got to thinking about that parable and that sower, he didn't do any of that. Now, if you look at this guy, he's throwing seed in the briar patch. Yeah. He's throwing seed in the pathway. He's throwing seed in the rocks. Seed is very precious. And what you don't sow, you can eat. We're talking about wheat or barley in this particular parable. And uh, one of, a couple of the signs of a good sower is precision and carefulness. This guy wasn't careful and he was not precise in the least. And I thought, why is that? And I felt the Lord begin to speak to me. And he says, this is where you're at in grants. You've done everything possible. We have, we have a house set aside for a parsonage. We have a small building for a church. We have a small group of people. He says, the work's been done. We need somebody to sow. And yeah, I can sow seed, but I'm really better at teaching gardening. <laughs> and so I begin to think about that. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about grants uh, tonight. Uh, it's, a, it's an area of about 10,000 people. Again, as I said, in the high desert. It sits on Interstate 40, a major interstate. And it is a western city that is full of hard pathways, rocky ground, and lots of briars and it's ready for the sowing of the seed of God. There's no active holiness work, uh, probably except for missions. We do have several Navajo missions around. There's no active holiness work, probably within 70 miles, 60, 70 miles. Uh, holiness is virtually unknown. Matter of fact, some people would say it's a cult. <laughs> and uh, it's just unknown, but we're here and we're trying to start a work. And so the other thing I want to talk to you about is, is that there's several 
Navajo missions all around the uh, area there. My son, Stephen, actually is a missionary in one of the missions. And one of the problems we've ran into over the years is that when a Navajo family gets saved, and they do, and they want to go out and change their lives, what's they do? The man goes out and gets a job instead of living off handouts and uh, other things. Goes out and get a job. So they move to Grants or Albuquerque or Gallup. There's no holiness churches. They get saved under holiness and then they try to live a life of victory under Calvinism. It doesn't work. And so the burden here I'd like to share for you tonight is Grants is ready for the sowing of the seed. There's no doubt in my mind. It's interesting that I didn't know this was going to be on here, the seed being planted. And so God gave me that little message back in the spring. It's ready for sowing. We have Navajo and other people that need to have churches to go to and grants is the location to do it. I'd like for you to pray for us. We need a pastor. We need somebody that can do better than I do and uh, have the work go forward. Thank you very much.